This is the Audi RS3. It's a high performance compact sports sedan and it makes amazing noises. We check out all the features and then take it for a test drive right now on Driving Sports TV. High performance electric cars are gaining in popularity. One of the reasons is that electric motors are very good at producing massive amounts of torque, which makes for blistering 0 to 60 times. The Kia EV6 GT, Genesis GV60, and Tesla Model S all go very fast. But for a car to be truly great, it needs more than just speed. This is the Audi RS3 sports sedan. Yes, it can go 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, so it is very fast. But that's just part of what makes this car so special. Oh, look at that! Under the hood is a turbocharged inline five cylinder engine. You know, the lineage of this motor goes all the way back to the Group B era cars of the 1980s. This modern iteration produces up to 401 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. The transmission is a seven speed dual clutch automatic. Power goes to all four wheels through Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system with a torque vectoring rear differential. EPA rates economy at 20 miles to the gallon in town and 29 on the highway. Premium fuel is recommended. The model we're driving today features a number of options, including tech, sport, and black packages. Total price, as you see it here, $64,845 US dollars, including destination. Right here, we can really appreciate the massive brakes that come on this vehicle. Also, it is wrapped in Pirelli Soto Zero winter tires because, of course, it is winter in the Pacific Northwest. Man, that is a great looking wheel and tire package. Of course, this being a small sports sedan, it doesn't have a lot of room in the trunk. Yeah, you could probably fit a couple golf bags. That's about it. Small ones. There's even a little hanger. Uh, for you to hang your grocery bags on. Under the floor, yeah, you just get to fix a flat and actually the battery's been moved under there for better weight distribution. Okay. Oh boy, this is gonna be tight. This seat is where I would be sitting if I were driving. I'm six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and I do not have a lot of room here for my knees. Can't even uncross my legs. Let's see, okay, there we go. Yeah, so once I'm actually in a proper position, this little cut does give me a little knee room. I am hitting my head, however. The seats do feel great. They're nicely contoured. I like the leather on them. Fold down the armrest and you get cup holders, which is nice. Of course, you can fold down this second row here if you need to fit in larger objects in the back, but cargo is not what this vehicle is about. Uh, down here, I also get two USB-C sockets and I even get something that vaguely resembles aircon. Oh yeah. I have to admit, I love an Audi interior. Let's hear this motor. <laughs> okay, well, we'll play with that in just a little bit. So the nice thing about Audi is that they've really simplified the driver experience. They don't mess with giving extra screens for the passenger and making things all, you know, screen, 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 screen. No, they focus on the essentials. We have a digital cluster in front of me, and then we also have an infotainment screen here that controls many aspects of the vehicle as well. Below that, we have aircon, which very clear, I love the fact that it's actual buttons. And then just below that, we have uh, vehicle specific controls such as the drive select, traction control, parking, and auto park features. And then right here, we just, it's really, really simple. We have a simple stereo control here to control volume as well as which track we're listening to next to the start button, next to this chonky uh, transmission controller. Below that, we do have cup holders. The plastic down here is a little cheap, it's a little hard. The texture's kind of, I don't know, it's 
It's kind of a little throwback texture, but the rest of the materials are excellent. Um, yeah, that's a little cheap. I don't know. Some of the plastics here are a little low rent. <laughs> this uh, piano black right here will definitely be all scratched up within a few weeks. But other than that, I really like this interior, especially these seats. They're quilted. They're set in leather. I have power controls, all the power controls I really would ever want. I have two memory slots so I can save my seat position. And then the steering wheel. Oh, man, this thing feels great. It's the perfect size. Again, very, very streamlined. Uh, on here, all we really have are the ability to change the view of the gauge cluster, go through a couple menus, and there's not a lot of them, actually. And then on the right, we can choose the drive modes with a simple RS switch there, and then control the volume of the stereo, as well as enable voice and phone. But, and then behind that, we got these little paddle shifters. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Now, speaking of the RS button up here, there are a number of configuration changes you can make to this vehicle. It's kind of a signature piece of these higher-end sports cars, so you can really tune them to your preference. Um, all I do is pick Audi Drive Select, and then if I go into RS Individual, you can see really what is available uh, to change up. Uh, drive, you can have more of a balanced or sport. Uh, suspension, it's adjustable, uh, sport balanced and comfortable. Steering, of course, most cars will do that. Uh, that'll tighten up in sport. You can even change the exhaust note because it's an active exhaust system. That's pretty cool. They call the loud one present. Uh, and then you have traction control, two stages of that. Um, on is normal, and then you can also go to sport if you want to let it get a little loosey-goosey on you. Uh, so what else do we have here? I believe there's also a drift mode setting. Ah, yes. There's a setting called RS Torque Rear hidden down in the corner, and they confirm, are you on a track? Sure. This is my pri private drive. I can say that I'm on a track. And then at that point, it puts maximum torque to the back. It's basically the drift mode. Moving on down, we got some other things here. I mean, this is a fully integrated high-end system. Uh, it has, you know, stereo. It has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is excellent. I have had no issues with it so far, although I really haven't used it all that much. Uh, but it has been actually pretty easy to use. There is a navigation system. Let's try a voice command. Find the nearest coffee stand. Please wait one moment while I find destinations for you. Okay, that's Please a problem. A line. I, I know for a fact that there's a coffee there's a coffee shop uh, within five miles of my house, and it's showing me one that's 24 miles away. Let's see if I can do nearest. Find the nearest coffee shop. Searching for coffee and tea nearby. <sighs> 24 you miles that way. Totally not cool, guys. Oh, well. So the set, voice commands aren't the best, uh, but it is built in. And of course, you can use wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you so desire. Get two USB-C charging sockets there. Oh, yeah. Even though this is a sports car, it is loaded with the latest in advanced safety. We have collision mitigation. We have blind spot warning, lane departure, adaptive cruise control, side assist. So if you're opening the door, it'll notify you if somebody's coming. Uh, and emergency assist, if you crash, it'll notify emergency services. So all the stuff that you really want in a modern car. Now let's stop talking about it and let's start driving. on the road. Oh, we can let that inline five just sing. Oh, it sounds so good. Now, normally when you buy this car, it comes with uh, summer tires, but we have it equipped with winter tires because the Pacific Northwest never know where we're going to get it's snow and it is rather cold out. It's 39 degrees right this minute. There are, of course, a number of different drive modes we can play with here. There's Comfort, uh, there's Auto, there's Dynamic, there's RS Individual, RF, RS Performance, and then RS Torque Rear. So to show you how these different drive modes work, I'm going to pull off into my lawn. I think it's important before we head out into the world uh, to really see how power is distributed around the system, specifically front to back. 
So I have a slow motion camera set out. I'm on my back lawn. Hope my wife doesn't mind. Uh, and I'm gonna put it into drive. And let's go into RS performance mode. Hear that engine sound change a little. Um, and it has reduced stability control as well. So I'm just gonna mosh the throttle. We're gonna see what these wheels do. Three, two, one, and go. Ooh, does a pretty good job of getting us out of the hole. Super slippery there. So even though traction control is turned off, it still kicked in uh, to kind of keep control of the vehicle. Uh, let's just go to comfort and see what that does. We're in drive and floor it. Yeah, much smoother on the throttle. One more mode to test here. Let's see what the drift mode will do for us. And to do that, we're gonna put it, bring up that, put it to RS torque rear, activate, and three, two, one, floor it. Oh yeah, I don't care. It's just gonna spin those tires. <laughs> In the slow motion replay, it's interesting to see how with the torque rear setting, that differential is really looking for power redistribution as it stutters the back wheel, shifting power left to right as necessary. But is it any good for a drift? Is anybody ever gonna do this with their RS? Probably not. Okay, now that we've had some fun with this, let's head on onto the public road and see what it's like to drive this thing every day. Whoa, yeah. Oh, hello. I love the sound. Love, love, love the sound of that in line five. It is amazing. Let's hear that again. Oh, <laughs> Oh, there is nothing like it. It gives me goosebumps. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so much fun. So I think you can immediately see right away the difference between this vehicle and something like the EV6 GT. The EV6 GT is ridiculously fast, but it lacks that drama and that emotion that you really want in a performance car you know it's not just about cold numbers it's also about getting your blood boiling and having just a heck of a good time feeling like there's this complicated machine that's doing all this stuff and it's doing it all just so you can do this <laughs> oh man this thing it is beautiful so driving it like this obviously in I, I now forget all about the little kind of cheap plastics here and there. I, they're, they're, yeah, don't care about that at all. All I can care about is that engine. Yeah, it has a stereo, who cares? Engine, oh. And also you get really get that feeling. I mean, it's part these seats, which really cocoon you uh, in comfort. And it's also part just this all wheel drive system mated to this engine, just all of it, it just, it comes together to just be such a perfect harmonious extension of the driver. And that's exactly what you want in something like this. There are very few cars that I would list as special. You know, the once in a decade car where you're like, wow, that car, it's, in, it's almost indescribable, the feeling that it gives you. Uh, to quote <laughs> uh, the movie Contact, they should have sent a poet. Let's take the, take the windy way back. In fact, I think with a car like this, you're always gonna be taking the windy way. Why wouldn't you? Whoa One thing that I gotta appreciate on this car is just how even at speed on a fairly uneven road, it still just soaks up the bumps. You know they're there, but they don't abuse you. Ooh. Kind of, I guess, fitting that as electric cars are taking over the world, 
we are getting some of the greatest petrol cars ever made. I mean, there's not a lot to say about this vehicle. It's comfortable, it looks amazing. I especially like this uh, blue paint they got on this one. It's safe because it has all the safety stuff. Uh, it even has adaptive cruise control, which is nice for an Audi. <laughs> Actually, it's really nice for a performance car just to include that. And even though I would love to crank the speed on this, I am on winter tires. Winter tires are not exactly grip tires. I mean, they provide phenomenal grip in the snow, but everything else, yeah, it's, it's just okay. When you're in RS performance mode, it really holds the gears all the way up to redline. So I am finding, even when I'm just tootling in performance mode, uh, I'm short shifting with the paddle shifters just to make sure that I'm not like screaming around every corner. Okay, let's go into a corner here and see how this feels. Oh man, that feels so good. And then you can add a little throttle and you can feel it turning that back end around Oh yeah, the, the diff on this is just awesome. This is of course a rear bias setup. Now I could put it all the way into rear drive mode, which is kind of, you know, the drift mode, but uh, these are public streets. Let's not get ridiculous here. Into the corner, downshift, throttle. Oh yeah. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> You know, even in normal comfort mode, the suspension's a lot softer. There's more body roll, but it's still fun to drive. I mean, it's still a powerful car. Go to RS Performance immediately, that transmission, oh. And it shifts so quick. Even on downshift, boom, there it goes. Oh, I love how it downshifts for me automatically. I throttle in. Oh yeah, I can feel that power being pushed to the back with that performance-oriented diff. Very cool. Torque vectoring helping me oversteer into the corner. Oh, this thing is awesome. Let's try a zero to 60 here, see what this thing can do. So I'm in RS performance mode and I basically just put the brake in all the way, slam the gas, and then release the brake. And three, two, one, go. Holy mother of 60 a few seconds ago <laughs> what that is brutal yeah <laughs> okay uh i was not ready for that level of brutality at uh 11 27 in the morning Whew. <laughs> uh, do i like it yes i do <laughs> More, please and then we can go right back to comfort mode and just pretend like everything is normal everything is normal navigate to gig harbor please wait one moment while I find destinations for you perfect I had started root guidance if you keep the commands vague it seems to do okay Oh, I love this. The tire pressure indicator tells you the exact temperature of the tire. Oh, that is cool. Um, navigation is showing up in my heads up display as it should. It's also duplicated down below in the other display. Oh man, I want one of these. I really want one of these. So good. I mean, Audi just got it right, you know? <sighs> I love everything being so driver focused. I mean, yeah, there's a passenger seat, but they're just here for the entertainment. <laughs> they're not here to be, you know, have their own touch display and to do all that kind of stuff. Their entertainment is just being in the RS. Oh man. From a more practical perspective, let's take a look at some amenities in this vehicle. Uh, I am just driving along comfort mode on the highway here. I'm gonna go ahead and set cruise control. That's gonna pace the vehicle in front of me like you would expect it to. I can modify the distance with a little jog stick down here. Four gaps of distance. And then, now that I've turned on adaptive cruise control and I have the lane departure warning enabled, um, I can basically cruise here. It'll pace the vehicle in front of me and notify me if I exit the lane. Let's try to see what happens here. 
uh, pushes me back in. But it is not an auto centering system. So the fact that this doesn't have true lane centering, it just has lane detection, I think is fine. You know, on a vehicle that's, let's say, a three row crossover or even just a family vehicle, those make sense. You want the top safety. You also want something that you can drive very long distances in. Uh, but this vehicle, it's all about driving fun and the passion of driving and just all the things that a driver loves. But you don't need lane centering because that's driving for you. And this is, that's the antithesis of what this vehicle is about. So I am okay. This is one of the rare instances where I'm okay with Audi not giving lane centering or any like semi-autonomous modes. All you get is adaptive, but I like adaptive, so that's good. <laughs> so when it comes down to it is, should you buy one of these or should you get the fastest electric? I, you know, the whole zero to 60 thing, I just don't care about it as much as I used to. Uh, it used to be like, oh, well, how fast is the car? Well, that was the first question you asked. But these days, it's like, what's the emotional resonance of the car? Like, what does it do for all of your senses? Not just, you know, the ability to put your lungs back in the seat and to compress your chest to feel very uncomfortable because of the G-forces on acceleration. I mean, you know, zero to 60 in a Tesla Plaid once is fine. Once. <laughs> you're probably never gonna do it again. Whereas this, you can enjoy this every single day. This has so many enjoyable aspects. Everything from the, the great transmission, which snaps in at just the right time to the perfect, perfect setup of this suspension. So now that we looked at you know performance on a grassy field and a windy road and now on the highway, I really think that this RS3 is a great daily driver, although an expensive one at that. But if you are looking for the ultimate driving experience that is super comfortable, loaded with features, looks great, and is at a price less than an M3, I think the RS3 should definitely be the top of your list. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them.